IXO section EE1 simplify radical expressions. In this IXO, I'm going to go over how you simplify a radical expression. A radical expression is when you have a radical sign and a number or a variable underneath the radical sign. So let's take our let's look at our first example, the square root of 50. I'm going to show you several different ways to simplify it. You need to understand all the different ways because depending on the problem, you're going to need, you know, you're going to need to know more than one way. All right, first let me show you the quickest, fastest, easiest way, which is our goal in every question. This is our our goal is to do it the fastest way. And then I'll show you how you would do it if you don't realize the fastest way. Okay, so when we simplify a radical expression, what we're trying to see is we're trying to see um, what's the greatest factor of 50 that I could get the square root of? What I mean by that is this. First of all, a factor is a number that you multiply. One of the, a factor of 50 is the number that you multiply to get 50. A factor is a number that you multiply to get this number that we're talking about. Okay, so I'm trying to find out what's the greatest factor of 50 that I could get the square root of. Okay, if I break up 50 into 25 times 2, I could get the square root of 25. The square root of 25 is 5. So once I get the square root of that 25, which is 5, the answer to that goes outside of the radical sign. Again, I got the square root of 25, which is 5, so that 5 goes outside the radical sign. And whatever I was not able to get the, the square root of gets left inside the radical sign and this is my simplified answer all right this is the the answer to simplify the square root of 50 the answer is 5 square root of 2 okay now what i just showed you is the fastest way to get the answer the fastest way to get the answer is if you could immediately realize what is the biggest factor of 50 that you could get the square root of and break it up into that okay but let's say you do not realize that okay so let me show you another way you would get the answer let's say you don't realize that um, well let me let me continue with 25 times 2 to show you one more thing okay another way you could have done it is you break it up into 25 times 2 and you continue to break it up until the only factors that you have left are all prime numbers all right so for example, 25 and 2, 2 is a prime number, but 25 is not because 25 could be further broken up into 5 times 5. Okay, now 5 is a prime number. So now everything I circled are prime numbers or, or whatever. I didn't circle them. I put a square, but you get the idea. All right, 5 is a prime number. A prime number, in case you forgot, a prime number is a number that's only divisible by 1 and itself to get... Um, a whole number as your answer okay so notice that um, in my prime numbers here five appears twice if a number appears twice that means that it's gonna go outside the radical sign and if it doesn't appear twice it remains underneath the radical sign the reason is if it appears twice that means this represents 25 and the square root of 25 is this 5 that I put out here and the 2, it only appeared once, so I cannot get the square root of 2. So it, it gets left underneath the radical sign. So again, I got my same answer. Now let me show you a third option here. Let's say instead of breaking it, breaking it up into 25 times 2, you don't realize that you could do 25 times 2 and you think 5 times 10. That's fine. You could do 5 times 10 and still get the correct answer. All right, But we got to do the same process of breaking it up into all the prime factors that make up 50 okay so uh, the number 5 is a prime number but the number 10 is not a prime number because I could break it up into 2 times 5 okay now 2 is a prime number and 5 is a prime number so look out of these three remaining factors again the 5 appears twice if it appears twice that means it goes outside the radical sign because that represents 25 and the 2 only appears once, so it remains underneath the radical sign. And again, I got my same simplified answer. 
listen, if you're good at math, all right, you know if you're good or not, right? Some of you guys are good and some of you guys struggle. If you're someone who's good at math, I did uh, almost the entire IXL mental math. There were a couple of exceptions towards the end that I wrote out, okay? But there's a lot of them that you could do mental math. Like this one, you could do mental math if you realize 25 times 2. I'll do more examples in a second, okay? Let me just say that in Spanish. Okay, así que en este IXL estamos simplificando expresiones radical o expresiones que, que están debajo del signo radical. Lo que estamos haciendo cuando hacemos esto es uh, estamos tratando de encontrar el factor más grande de este número que se le puede coger la raíz cuadrada. Ok, así que por ejemplo, 50. Un factor, los factores son los números que se multiplican para coger el número que está aquí. Así que 50 lo puedo romper en 25 por 2. Ok, y uh, el número 25 le puedo coger la raíz cuadrada. La raíz cuadrada de 25 sería 5. Así que como le cogí la raíz cuadrada, el 5 lo pongo afuera del signo radical. El 2 no le puedo coger, coger la raíz cuadrada, así que el 2 se mantiene debajo del signo radical. Eso es la manera más rápida de hacer este problema. Si pueden pensar desde el principio que oh, puedo romper 50 en 25 por 2. Ahora, vamos a decir que lo hacen así, pero no se dan cuenta que se puede coger la raíz cuadrada de 25. Si rompo los factores de 50 y los si sigo rompiendo hasta, hasta que so lo que me queda es solamente los números primos que se multiplican para coger 50, que en este caso sería 5, 5 y 2. Si un número aparece do dos veces como, como el 5, eso representa que estos dos 5 representan el número 25. Así que eso significa que puedo coger la raíz cuadrada de 25, que es 5, y como aparece do dos veces, eso me dice de poner un 5 afuera y ya te terminé con los 5. Y este 2 que, que me quedó, que no le puedo coger la raíz cuadrada, se, se mantiene debajo del signo radical. Y otra manera que lo puedo hacer también es, si no me doy cuenta, porque para algunos de estos problemas no se van a dar cuenta de la manera más rápida de coger la respuesta. Así que, si no me doy cuenta que puedo hacer 25 por 2, podría haber hecho 5 por 10 y seguir rompiendo los factores, así que a, hasta que solamente me, me queda los números primos que se multiplican para coger 50, que sería 5, 2 y 5. Otra vez, si un, si un factor aparece dos, dos veces, eso significa que yo puedo coger la raíz cuadrada de 25 en este caso. Así que pongo un 5 afuera y el 2 se mantiene adentro. All right, let's look at the next example, the square root of 60. All right, so off the top of my head, I'm sure most of us, the first thing that we think of, including myself, is 6 times 10. And that's not the quickest way to get the answer, but let's do it that way anyways. So 6 times 10, I can't get the square root of 6 or the square root of 10. So let me break this up into the prime numbers that make up 6, which are 2 times 3. And just to keep track of my answers, I'm going to circle the 2 and the 3. I'm going to circle the prime numbers when I get them. And 10, I'm going to break it up into 2 times 5. So those are the prime numbers. Okay, aquí tengo los factores primos. Now the 2 appears twice, so that means the 2 I, I could have represents the number 4 because 2 times 2 is 4 and the square root of 4 is 2. So since the 2 appears twice, I'm going to put it one time outside the radical sign. The 3 I cannot get the square root of, the 5 I cannot get the square root of. So multiply the 3 and the 5 together and just leave it in here. Or another way to think about that is this. You could also think about it like this. The 3 and the 5 are still underneath the radical sign. So just multiply them together and you get 15. So there's my simplified answer for this question. And I'll show you in one moment the quickest way you could have gotten your answer. Okay, así que aquí el 2 aparece dos veces. Así que pongo el 2 una vez afuera del signo radical. El 3 no le puedo coger la raíz cuadrada ni el 5 tampoco. Así que el 3 y el 5 se quedan debajo del signo radical como escribí aquí y lo multiplico junto. 3 por 5 me da 15. Aquí está mi respuesta final. Déjame enseñarles la manera más rápido que, que debíamos haber hecho este problema. 
All right, so the quickest way for the square root of 60 would have been if you realize that you could break it up into 4 times 15, which most of us would, would have not thought about that, at least not first. All right, so if I break it up into 4 times 15, I get the square root of 4, which is 2, and the 15, I can't, I can't break it up any further. So that's my answer. All right, both methods are fine. Okay, si lo hubiera rompido en 4 por 15, puedo coger la respuesta más rápido. Let's look at the next one. Okay, the next one I got to show you something because this one has a number outside the radical sign. So what do I do with that number? I'm going to explain right now, okay? Esta tiene un número afuera del signo radical. All right, so let's just look at the square root of 12. Okay, vamos a mirar la raíz cuadrada de 12. The quickest way to simplify it would be if you realize that you could do 4 times 3 and you get the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. And the 3 I can't do anything with, so it stays underneath the radical sign. Okay, now the 6 that's outside the radical sign, guess what? You multiply it with the 2 that I just put outside the radical sign. So the final answer would be 12 square root of 3. I'll say it again. The 6 that's outside the radical sign, you multiply it with whatever else you put outside the radical sign. So since I got the square root of 4, the square root of 4 is 2, and I put it outside the radical sign, I got to multiply it with this 6. 6 times 2 is 12. This is my simplified answer. Now, just to show you another way, let's say you didn't do 4 times 3 to break up the 12. Let's say you did 6 times 2, and I can't get the square root of anything here. I could just keep breaking it up into all the prime numbers that make up 12, all the prime factors that make up 12. Okay, so 6, I break it up into 2 times 3. And as you could see, like I said before, if the number appears twice, that means you could get the square root of that number and if it only appears once, you leave it underneath the radical sign. All right. Um, so that two, it appears twice. That represents the number four. And that also tells you what you could have done to do this faster. You could have done four times three. All right. For these small numbers, it's not a big deal. But when they get bigger, you'll see how you could see what you should have done when you see your answer. I'll, I'll explain when I get there. Okay. So again, whatever is outside, you multiply it together. Okay. Cuando saco este 2 para afuera, lo multiplico con el 6 que ya estaba afuera. Ok, si saca un número del signo radical y hay un número también afuera del signo radical, lo tiene que multiplicar junto. Alright, so let's look at these. Square root of 27. Ok, there's, not, there's only one option, which is 9 times 3. Okay, and you should realize that you could get the square root of 9. If you don't realize it, you just go like that. Okay, the square root of 9 is 3. Okay, so now remember I said that if a number appears twice, you put it outside the box. So these two 3's appear twice, so I'm going to put one 3 outside the box to represent that 9. But this 3 is left, so this is my simplified answer. Ok, esta es mi respuesta simplificado. Si lo rompo en todos los factores primos, el 3 aparece tres veces. Ok, pero solamente si aparece dos veces lo puedo sacar. Ok, porque esa, esos dos, tres, esos tres que aparecen dos veces representan el número 9 y la raíz cuadrada de 9 sería este 3 que ya saqué. I hope that makes sense. All right, let's look at this one. 3 times the square root of 75. Alright, so, whoops. Let's just look at the square root of 75 first. Alright, this one's pretty obvious. You break it up into 25 times 3. The square root of 25 is 5. So I, I take that 5 outside the box. But 3, I can't do anything with it. So it stays underneath the radical sign. And there is already a 3 outside the box. So I got to multiply it with this 5. So my answer is 15. Square root of 3. All right, over here, the square root of 63. Square root of 63, I would break it up into 9 times 7. And obviously, you got to know your timetables for these. If you don't, it's going to be a lot harder if you don't know your timetables. But then again, you're already in high school, and you should have learned your timetables a long time ago. If you continue to not have them memorized, you're just going to keep struggling with math forever. If a first grader, second grader, third grader can, can uh, memorize their multiplication tables, why can't you? 
things to think about. It really just takes five or 10 minutes a day for maybe like two or three days and that's it. All right, because you're using them in class all the time. All right, so anyways, speech over. All right, so 63, I could break it up into nine times seven. What's the square root of nine? The square root of nine is three. And the seven, I can't do anything with, so it stays there underneath the radical sign. So there's my answer. That one's easy. All right, so let's look at this one. Two times the square root of 45. The square root of 45 you should break it up into uh, 9 times uh, 5. You get the square root of 9, which is 3. And this 5 stays underneath the radical sign. And since there's a 2 outside, I got to multiply that 2 times the 3 that I put outside the radical sign. So my final answer would be 6 square root of 5. Now you could have also done 45, broken it up into 15 times 3. If you do that, just break up the 15 into 3 times 5. And now if you look at all the prime factors, you see that the 3 appears twice. So that tells you to put the 3 outside of the radical sign because it represents 9. All right, let's look at the this one, 10 square root of 175. So the square root of 175 Obviously, if, you, if you've dealt with money, you should realize that 25 cents. 25 cents, how, much, how many quarters do you need to have a dollar and 75 cents? All right, you need seven. So just use that to figure out that 25 goes into 175 seven times. 25 times seven. All right, now again, get the square root of 25. The square root of 25 is five. So that goes outside the radical sign. The 7 I can't do anything with, so it stays underneath the radical sign. And there was already a 10 outside the radical sign. So I got to multiply that 10 with this 5. So my final answer is 50 square root of 7. All right, this one, uh, let's look at the square root of 98. And by the way, if you don't know, you know what to put, just if it's an even number, that means break it up into two times, uh, in this case, 49. And look, right there's my, my answer. I could get the square root of 49. The square root of 49 is 7. And this 2, I cannot get the square root of, so it stays underneath the radical sign. There was already a 5 outside of the radical sign, so I got to multiply that 5 times this 7. So my final answer is 35 square root of 2. Okay, moving on, a few more examples, and then we'll move on to another IXL. All right, so right here, 5 square root of 99. 99, or square root of 99, I could break it up into 9 times 11. I get the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3, but I cannot do anything to break up the 11. I can't get the square root of 11, so that stays underneath the radical, radical sign. And there was already a 5 outside of the radical sign. So I'm going to multiply that 5 with this 3. So my final answer is 15 square root 11. Let me do the next one in Spanish. Okay, in Espanol. Okay, para esta, de, déjame coger la raíz cuadrada de 45, o simplificar lo que diga. Así que la manera más rápido sería eh, romper 45 en 9 por 5. Okay, eso me deja coger la raíz cuadrada de 9, que sería 3. Y el, con el 5 no le puedo hacer nada, así que se mantiene debajo del signo radical. Como ya había este 3 afuera del signo radical, lo tengo que multiplicar con este 3. Así que la respuesta final sería 9 raíz cuadrada 5. Y la próxima, la raíz cuadrada de 242. Ok, um, yo no sé por cuál, qué son los factores de 242, pero sé que termina en un número par. Si termina en un número par, eso quiere decir que se puede dividir por 2. All right? If this number ends in an even number, that tells me I could, I could divide it by 2. Whoops, I don't know why I wrote that. Hold on. All right, so divide it by 2. Divídenlo por 2. 
Two goes into two, one time. Two goes into four, two times. Two goes into two, one time. Okay, that allows me to see that I can get the square root of 121. The square root of 121 is 11 because 11 times 11 is 121. And this number I cannot get the square root of, so it stays underneath the radical sign, and there's my simplified answer. Okay, la raíz cuadrada de 121 es 11. All right, and this will be the last slide for, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, this will be the last slide for this IXL, and then there should be another IXL following. All right, so let me get the square root of 375 first. Listen, if it ends in a 5 or a 0, you could divide by 5. All right, so I'm saying this for the people that struggle with multiplication and division. If a, if a number ends in the number 5 or 0, that means you could divide it by 5. Okay, I'm going to try to get to the answer quicker by dividing it by 25. Because I'm using my knowledge of money. All right, this is like saying $3.75. So how many quarters do you need to have $3.75? Every dollar is four quarters. So 4, 8, 12, 15. You need 15 quarters to have $3.75. Wait, I said that wrong. Did I? No, no, I said it right. I said it right. Uh, 4, 8, 12, and then 15. Okay. Um, so 15, I could break it up into 3 times 5. I mean, I could have stopped right there and just gotten the square root of 25, but let me, let me show it this way just because this is a big number and I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page. If I break it up into all the prime factors of 375, okay, this is what I got. So again, if a number appears twice, that means you can get the square root of, in this case, 25. So that goes outside the box. And if it does not appear twice, it stays inside the box. I just multiplied the 3 and the 5 together to get 15. Now, there was already an 8 outside of the radical sign. So I got to multiply that 8 with this 5. So my final simplified answer is 40 square root of 15. Okay, now next example, let me do this one in Spanish, but again, that number, it ends in an even number, so that means you could divide it by 2. That's what I would start with if you don't know what to start with. Divide it by 2 and see 2 times what equals 294. Okay, este número termina en un número par, 294, es un número par, que diga. Así que eso quiere decir que se puede dividir por 2, para ver 2 por cuánto me da 294. Así que si lo divido por 2, eso me dice que 2 por 147 me da 294. Así que ahora déjame romper este número hasta que solamente tengo los factores primo que multiplico para coger 294. El número 2 es un 2. El número 2 es un número primo. El 147... Si saben la tabla de multiplicación, deben ver que, que 14 es un factor de, es un múltiple de 7 y 7 también es un múltiple de 7. Así que 7 por cuánto me da 147. 7 por 2 me da 14 y 7 por 1 me da 7. Así que 7 por 21 me da 147. 7 es un número primo. El 21 lo puedo romper en 7 por 3 y ahora tengo todos los factores primo que se multiplican para coger 294. Ahora cuando lo miro, si un número aparece dos veces, como este 7, quiere decir que lo saco para fuera del signo radical, porque esos dos 7 representan el número 49. Y si no aparece dos veces, se mantiene debajo del signo radical, el 2 y el 3. Y si están juntos debajo del signo radical, lo tengo que multiplicar juntos. Así que el 2 y el 3, si lo multiplico, me da 6. Y afuera del signo radical tenía este 3. Así que tengo que multiplicar este 3 con el 7 que saqué para afuera del signo radical. Así que 3 por 7 es 21. Así que mi respuesta final ser, sería 21 raíz cuadrada de 6. 21 raíz cuadrada de 6. 21 square root of 6 is my answer there. All right. And the last example on this IXL, uh, let's get the square root of 490. So it should be obvious, I hope, that you could break this up into 49 times 10. 
The square root of 49 is 7. So that 7 goes outside the radical sign. The 10 stays underneath the radical sign. And there was already another 7 outside of the radical sign. So I got to multiply these two 7s together. So my final answer is 49 square root of 10. All right, guys, that concludes the lesson for this IXL section EE1.